Okay, then that's my raw review. But before I start talking about that, I just want to say it's actually amazing that the weather forecast in England is actually correct for once. They said we were going to have a heat wave, and it is actually boiling. You know, we're like almost in October, and it's got to be at least like 22, 23 degrees here. I'm actually roasting. I'm normally always freezing, and like, you know, I'm like here, like, eh, I'm dying. I was going to do my video outside, but like my dad's been like cutting the lawn, so you wouldn't actually be able to hear me. You'd just be able to hear of like the lawnmower, so. And that's why I'm still inside, even though it's absolutely roasting outside. But yeah, um, I just want to say, this is like random, but um, I was like, this morning I was like listening to like Evanescence, and I was like, oh man, I haven't even told you guys. I'm actually going to see Evanescence in concert in November, which is awesome, because I've loved Evanescence for like eight years. I think it's eight years they've been around for. Well, whenever they like released um, Bring Me To Life, and they used that as a theme tune for like No Way Out, like 2003, I loved that song, so I'm so excited that I'm going to see them. One of my mum's friends, um, they bought tickets for like their um, daughter, and then they were going to go, my mum's friend, but obviously they thought they were a bit old, so <laughs> they were using their two tickets for someone else, and they packed, like, asked me if I wanted to go, and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I love Evanescence, I haven't been to a concert for ages, so yeah, I'm not too sure what to, to I never know what to wear for concerts, because obviously Evanescence, they're not like gothic, but they're a bit, you know, that kind of way, so I can imagine like loads of like gothic -y kind of people that are on there, like, yay, just in like bright colours, I have no idea what to wear, but you know, that should be awesome, so I just thought I'd let you guys know, and also I finished reading Gerald's game, it was weird, Good, but weird. <laughs> if you like weird kind of um, thriller kind of books, then I suggest you read that one. Now I'm on some more nice ones. I'm reading like nice girly books because <laughs> I've read too many horror books lately and they're all a bit weird and leave horrible images in my mind afterwards. Anyway, on to talking about wrestling. Raw was fairly good this week. Obviously, it was the last show before Hell in a Cell, which still is far too short for a build for a pay per view. And it's annoying that we have to pay for this pay per view. Well, I was hoping that, you know, I was thinking, well, obviously they're going to like charge for Survivor Series because they normally always do. But, you know, Hell in a Cell, hopefully it will be free. But, no, I've got to pay 15 quid for Hell in a Cell, which is devastating. But I'm going to do it anyway because I have to review the show for you guys. And obviously, I want to see it anyway. And I, I don't watch shows on the internet and, like, download them illegally because I'm. Just not like that at all. <laughs> I have to pay for them because I feel really bad. I watched one pay-per-view on YouTube and I hated it. Just the fact that it split into like a hundred parts. Oh, and it took so long to load. So I don't care. I'd rather pay 15 quid than go through that again. Anyway, I've rambled far too much at the start of this video. I haven't even started talking about Raw yet. So Triple H comes out. Surprise, surprise, at the start of Raw. He needs to do that all the time. Seriously, they need to have someone else open the show except Triple H every week. Um, he says that he fired Miz and Truth for their actions and their rubbish apology. Man, that was so lame. I was hoping that there was something else that he would found out about, but apparently not. So, yeah, and he said Mark Henry was going to pay the $250,000 fine for attacking Jerry Lord and the King. And apparently, yeah, the, they um, didn't, like, set up the table properly, like, as, like to break easy. So when, obviously, Mark Henry put Jerry Lord for it last week, he got injured pretty bad. And um, I read on, like, a forum that Vincent Mann was absolutely furious, and he was in a well bad mood backstage last week. Because apparently Del Rio mentioned his name, and it's supposed to be ruining, like, you know, stuff. He's meant to probably be coming back at some point, and he didn't want anyone to mention his name. But obviously Del Rio said, oh, I wish Vincent Mann would come back, blah, blah. So he was absolutely furious with that. I just thought I'd give you that little inside information in case you didn't know. Um, he says that um, no one is bigger than WWE. And there's quite a lot happened in the first segment. So I'm going to condense it down. Basically, Dog Ziggler, Cody Rhodes and Christian all came out. They're all complaining about what's happened to them over the, like, the last week or so. And, um, you know, asking tri uh, Triple H what he's going to do about it. So Triple H says, oh, well, I'll fix all your problems. Christian, you want one more match, so I'll give you one more match. You can face Sheamus at Hell in a Cell. Randy Orton on SmackDown and John Cena tonight. So Christian's like, what? And then with Dolph Ziggler, he says that he can um, face Zack Ryder in a US title match. So obviously Zack Ryder, um, Dolph Ziggler's like annoyed at that fact. And then um, Cody, um, he says that Cody can have a night off, obviously, because he got like busted open. Yes, yeah, so obviously, I was saying in my last video that I thought it was weird that it got cut off um, after the DDT that Orton did, and it did. And if you do go on YouTube, you can find videos of um, the beatdown that um, Orton actually did on Cody, and he busted his like head up pretty bad. It was disgusting. <laughs> you can see all this blood like falling out of his head. <laughs> that was pretty horrible. Um, but then. Um, uh, Cody says, oh, well, you know, um, Triple H is doing such a bad job as COO, so um, Triple H is like, well, in that case, you can fight, and the next ten, like, I'll go backstage, and the next nine men that I find will compete against you in a ten-man over-the-top rope battle royal for the Intercontinental title. So that was pretty cool, because they used to do things like that. I, I, I like it when they just, like, kind of do, like, random battle royals and stuff, because the ones that they do, like, obviously, I know, like, the Warrior Rumble, you can have that every year, but then generally, they were kind of, um, they plan it, and you think, oh, well, the people that they put in, they're so ridiculous, so you just know there's no chance of winning. But this one, it was actually pretty much um, guys who were all similar levels, so it could have won. Even though it was pretty obvious that um, Cody wasn't going to lose his Intercontinental title. But anyway, so it wasn't too bad of a match. They had um, Cody Rose in it, Justin Gabriel, Daniel Bryan, John Morrison, Alex Riley, Ted DiBiase, 
Sin Cara, Ezekiel Jackson, Drew McIntyre. Whoa, was Drew McIntyre was actually in it. And Seamus, <laughs> Drew McIntyre got eliminated first. Hmm, this guy is seriously going downhill. His career is like taken a terrible turn. <laughs> so much for, you know, the chosen one and the next WWE champion. Um, but Cody Rhodes and Seamus are the last two. Um, Cody Rhodes takes his mask off. Uh, he goes to hit Seamus with it, but Seamus stops him. But then Christian's on the outside, and he kind of distracts Seamus, and then Cody does actually whack Seamus in the head with his mask and knocks him off the top rope. So he still retains his Intercontinental Championship, so that wasn't too bad. Then we had a Divas Tag Team match, Kelly Kelly and E versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia, and finally, finally, Beth Phoenix actually won. <laughs> I was like, yes, at last, because, you know, you know how angry I am at the fact that Kelly Kelly's still the reign champion. But they've obviously announced it again. It's Kelly versus Beth for the Divas title at Hell in a Cell. So I am seriously keeping my fingers crossed that this will finally, finally be Beth's chance to win. Because to be honest, Kelly's been champion for ages. For a Divas championship, well, champion, she's held it for quite a while. So, you know, it's her time to move over, let Beth have it. And, like, Beth and Charlie has gone this, like, long kind of run. Not that they're going to be, like, kind of, like, lay cool as in sharing the title, but, um... I think that they, they could, between them, like, have the title and stuff and just be, like, really awesome. So, fingers crossed, people. Come on. <laughs> Beth Phoenix to win on Sunday. Um, Mark Henry was in a match against Great Carly, but it wasn't really a match because Carly, like, was in the, or came out and Henry hit him in the back with, like, the title and then hit the World's Strongest Slam. That looked so funny because, like, you could see that, like, Carly is, like, helping Mark Henry by, like, grabbing onto his leg to support his weight. It was quite funny. I was like, that looked terrible. <laughs> Everyone was like, wow, he's so strong. And I'm like, he's holding onto Henry's leg to help him balance. What? But, you know, anyway. So that was that. But it's pretty cool. Mark Henry's like, I ain't afraid of you, like, shouting at Carly after he's hit him with, like, the title belt. <laughs> but, you know, anyway. Um, so John Cena comes out and does his super serious promo about how he's going to hell this Sunday and there's no way he's coming back from hell without the title. And it's like, right. <laughs> I, oh, I, John Cena's serious promos are really bad. I don't like them. But yeah, anyway, so Del Rio comes out. Uh, and so does Cena Punk. They're both on commentary for the Cena versus Christian match. It hasn't been going on very long, but um, Alberto like gets in the ring and kicks uh, Cena. So <laughs> Christian gets disqualified and it's like, right, that was an interesting match. Not so that was that. Nothing interesting to report about that one. Then we had Zack Ryder versus uh, Dolph Ziggler for the US Championship, but um, Swagger comes out with Vicky. So it seems like Dolph and Swagger are on the same page now, which is weird. <laughs> and, uh, but Swagger um, interferes and then gets the win for Ziggler. Um, they attack uh, Ryder after the match, but then Air Boom come out to make the save, and Teddy Long comes out and just likes to make a six man tag match. And he says that obviously if Vicky can't find another partner for um, Dolph and Swagger, then there will be like a handicap match. So um, the match starts, and then halfway through, um, Vicky Guerrero brings out Mason Ryan, and obviously we haven't seen him for, like, ages. He doesn't look quite so Batista-ish anymore. <laughs> He's got a bit more hair now, but still pretty much resembles Batista. So, um, yeah, the match goes on for a while, but then um, Mason Ryan gets tagged in, but then he, like, turns on um, Ziggler and Swagger, and, like, you know, just attacks them both and, like, leaves, and then um, the zigzag gets the win. No, not the zigzag, and then um, Zack hits the high rider, Rough Rider, <laughs> High Rider, what? Zack hits the Rough Rider for the win um, on Ziggler, so that's the second pinfall on Ziggler, and obviously so Mason Ryan. Whether that means he's like kind of turning face now, I don't really know, but um, we'll see what happens with him anyway. I was, I was just completely forgotten about him, so I was like, what? But yeah, anyway. Main event was Alberto Rio versus CM Punk. I still hate it when they do that. You know, people are like, they're going to face each other at a pay-per-view, and then they fight each other on Raw beforehand, and you're like, what? Why do they do that? But anyway, Cena's on commentary on this. I couldn't be bothered to watch this match, to be honest. <laughs> Del Rio's wrestling still kind of bores me. So even though CM Punk was in it, I was just like, oh, I'm tired. So fast forward in most of it. So Punk gets the win with some kicks, and it's like, okay then. And then, um... The cell starts, like, lowering after the match, and you can't actually, you can't, like, Del Rio, you forget that he's kind of there. So the cell um, comes down and traps Rodriguez in the cave, like, or in the cell with um, Cena and Punk. So they hit, like, you know, the GTS and the attitude adjustment on him. And then as they're, like, you know, like, well, not celebrating, but, you know, <laughs> the fact that they've, like, just attacked him, um, Del Rio comes in with a chair and just completely takes out Punk and Cena which looks pretty impressive. So I'm glad that he's kind of turned into this kind of angry heel now, not this, like, cocky guy that he used to be. So I'm hoping he sticks with that character, because obviously it's a lot more believable when he's, like, this kind of psycho, <laughs> evil kind of heel. But, you know, so yeah, that's the build-up to Hell in a Cell. Still only, like, know a few matches, really. We only know, obviously, the triple threat Hell in a Cell match, Orton versus Henry, Divas match, and Sheamus versus Christian. Are there any others that they've announced yet? I'm not really too sure. So they know four matches, but I'm sure that they'll add some more anyway. 
So yeah, that was my raw review. <laughs> Sorry if that was a bit of a rush. Oh, I'm actually literally roasting. I've got my windows like wide open and I'm still like, ugh. So yeah, I hope it stays nice weather for it like when I'm on my holiday because I'm going where Liam lives in Cumbria. It's like obviously near Scotland and it's absolutely freezing. <laughs> so some sunshine out there would be nice. But then thanks for your votes for obviously what I should do for my video next Friday. Um, it seems like the general consensus is to do the next question out of the video. So continue to leave your questions, obviously. Thanks to all of you who've left them already. But if you think of any more, like I said, it can be about wrestling. It doesn't have to be about wrestling. It can be about, I don't know, music, gaming, my life, but just nothing weird. Not that you guys would. Yeah, so yeah, so I'll be doing the question out the video next Friday. I think I'll save the WrestleMania 17 review for another time. Possibly when I get 600 subscribers. It could take a while. I've been, like, stuck up, like, the same level for ages. Boo, no one wants to subscribe to me. So spread the word, guys. Help <laughs> me get some more subscribers. And then I'll do my WrestleMania 17 review then for you. Anyway, so thanks for watching this video and I will see you guys at the weekend with my Smackdown review. Bye!